Alrighty. Hi there, folks, and welcome to another episode. We got a good one for you today, I believe. But first, first aid. No, I'm not sponsored. I bought this. But, you know, when you have some insurance and you have some leftover uh, FSA money, which is called also your flexible spending account, and you need to buy some stuff to uh, use up that money or get some doctor appointments taken care of, you do that. But why not buy a couple of first aid kits? I bought one to put out here in the shop. Now, this one says it's uh, 114 pieces ready to treat everyday injuries. My goodness, I hope I'm not getting hurt every day. So, I, don't, I just want to be able to treat the once in a while injuries. Anyway, just thought I'd show you that. Something you could do. Second, what's in the case? Well, let's take a look at what's in the case. Oh, well, what's this? Just a little cheap scope. That's all. What are these? And this. Scope rings. Wigatini rail. I think that's how you pronounce it. Let's see what I'm going to do with this today. Let's jump down here to my little table. Okay, my saw horses and piece of plywood and a... We'll call that what it is. And I'll show you what I'm going to do today. Well, I've been sitting around thinking. I put some of these uh, red dots and different uh, optics type things on these little heritage Rough Riders that I've been purchasing. And I got to thinking, as you guys probably have thought, well, I've got a, that's about a 15 year old Smith's and Wesson 686 uh, 357 Magnum. And I got to thinking, man, wouldn't it be cool to put a scope on that? First things first, let's make sure she's empty. Yep, we're empty. But I noticed the last time I was cleaning this gun, or revolver, there was two extra drilled and tap holes right here. Got the guy to thinking. Why is there two extra drilled and tapped holes there if they weren't something designed to put there? Well, lo and behold, I got to searching and I found this uh, W-E-I-G-A-N-D, Weekend Machine and Die and Design. It's uh, Weekend CH Inc. I'll leave a link. It's uh, I'll leave a link to the to it below. But I discovered these guys, and I thought, well, heck, they make a nice little uh, Picatinny Picatinny style rail that bolts right on top of this gun or this revolver. And I'm like, I can dig that. And I went ahead and splurged for the rings. Now these are not that expensive. I didn't feel like thirty eight ish bucks. And when I bought the rail and scope mount combo. Then I realized it was only, I got 10% off. So that's what I did. So I'm going to put this on here. It's going to look a bit ridiculous. But the cool part is, I'm going to put this scope on it and play around with the scope. But then if I decide that I don't like the scope, I still got a rail that I can mount any other optics onto. Whether it's a red dot or green dot or small scope. Whatever I want to do. But it looks like it comes with three screws and the rail. And you just put it on. First thing I'm going to do, that one thing that he shows on his website is there's a, with the rear sight, there's a round front and a square front. And it sounds like the round front up here is from like 99 and later. And the ones that have the square front are earlier than 99 or up to 99 or however you want to word it. Anyway, he's got a really nice website. I'd encourage you to check it out. Like I said, I'll leave a link below. But um, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and back these two screws off and get this old sight out of the way. And the nice thing is I can put this right back on. That's not a big deal. It's uh, just one screw. And you can slide this thing out and out of the way. And I'll keep it in my case. There's a little T-nut here that slides in the groove right there. Anyway, there you go. That's off of there. Now the cool part is, I'm going to open this up and just see how it fits on there. It's a real nice looking piece. That's going to look real nice on there. I chose to go with the aluminum instead of the black. Maybe the black would look better, but I chose the aluminum finish. 
Uh, the other cool part about this design is back here there's a little stop. And I hope you can see that. I'm not going to... Maybe I will zoom in. No, I'm not. You, you guys can see it. There's a little stop right here where it's relieved on either side. What that does is allow this to go up against tight against this face right here. And the nice thing about that by design, when you have that on there, and you got to imagine, you got to use your head a little bit, that when this is all the way up against that and you tighten your screws down, that the recoil, the gun's trying to go this way and your scope's trying to stay still. So the recoil like this, if you don't have that something against there like a hard stop, it puts a lot of pressure on these screws. The screws are having to do all the work of holding everything in place. By putting that up against that stop, that removes that pressure off the screws and takes all the pressure and puts it here where it belongs. But yeah, that's going to make a... You, that installs... That's, I mean, that's on there. That fits pretty nice. That is a, a well-designed part. Kudos to Jack for doing that. That's that's a pretty cool. So in, order, in preparation to get ready to put it on, I'm going to take a little brake clean and flush out these threaded holes to make sure they're nice and clean. My understanding is these are a 648 thread. And just to make sure everything fits before I get too carried away, I'm going to go ahead and try a screw in these holes. And the other thing I did splurge on was five bucks. I bought a set of little Allen wrenches from him. And he, you know, it's uh, the guy that does the videos, I'm, I'm guessing that might be Jack, the owner of this company, did the videos, said only buy this particular brand of Allen wrench or hex key wrench. And I'm not, I'm not seeing, let's see here. I'll put the name in the bottom of the description. It's too small for my old eyes to see. But anyway, what he said about these particular Allen wrenches is they fit more precise, less slop, and like that screw right there, you put it in there, there is oh, almost no back and forth. Let's just go ahead and see if these holes thread okay, or this fits. Oh yeah, beauty Clark. Threads right down in there, no issues. I'm going to check the back one. The front one should be good too because I just took a screw out of it. I'm just making sure there's no debris or anything going to mess with my install process here. I'm satisfied with that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some uh, brake cleaner and I'm going to shoot down in here and get that flushed out really good with brake cleaner. I'm going to do it upside down so I don't get brake cleaner running all over everything. I'm going to spray it. I'm going to put me a nice absorbent towel here and, and spray this down and flush it out. Then I'll air blow it dry. And then I'll use a, a same towel that's wet with brake cleaner. And I'll, the cool part is you can take this Allen wrench, wrong one, this one here, yep. You can take this one right here and stick it right back in there. Or stick it in there and put your paper towels and just spin it. And clean all the, uh, any kind of oils or grease or anything that might be on those threads before we use our blue thread locker. Go ahead and give it a shot here. That will definitely remove any any grease or oils in there. Let's blow it off. Now we've got that ready to receive a, a mount. Now what I can do is use this overspray, this wet towel here, and just spin that around a few times. You can see how black and how dirty those screws actually are. If you think you got brand new screws and they're not dirty, you're wrong. So we want that blue thread rock locker to do everything we're intended to do because we don't want those screws backing out. But the nice thing about the blue thread locker is it don't use green or red. I think green's like a sleeve locker, red's like a thread locker is that's a more permanent high temperature. You actually have to heat it up to get it removed. So let's throw this away. And now we're ready. Well this is going to be this is simple, right? Now what I'm going to do is bring this, slide this on until I feel it 
it stopped right there. And now that that's stopped, I'm going to take some of this thread locker and put on this screw. We're going to go right down inside here. Well designed piece. Those threads, there is no misalignment there whatsoever. And I'm just getting them all started. Last but not least, the third one. I will just get them a little snug in here, get them all tightened down. Nice, nice. Well, that's going to, that looks, that makes that thing look wicked. Bingo, bango, bongo. All right, wipe up any excess. Loctite I had here, get on, get on things. Now these are the scope mounts I believe he makes. It looks like it. He's got his own packaging and everything. Really nice looking parts. And that's where some of these other Allen wrenches might come into play here. Yep, that fits that one. Very nice design, it would appear. I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of loosely uh, install. Yeah, I'll put this one all the way to the back, maybe, huh? Let well, me old heater kicking on. We're not going to get crazy tightening these down yet. We're just going to give them a little snugging. Let's go ahead and pull the old top off. And I'm not putting any blue Loctite on these because I know the rail is going to be a lot more permanent fixture on this gun than the, uh, than the scope will be. So I may change my mind and put a red dot on it or some other fashioned sight. Well, there you have it. I've got this. I've got this a little bit past the barrel. I have a feeling I'm going to get some muzzle flash, flash blast here. But this is like the position I want it in. It feels when I hold it up and look at something through it. It looks good. Now this is just a, a four by thirty-two, so it's got a four power magnification with a thirty-two optic or a thirty-two millimeter opening. Uh, it's really clear. Now you guys are going to laugh, but this is an NC Star scope. And the reason you're going to laugh is they're very inexpensive, but I've used these on my Mosin Nagants, which is a high powered rifle, um, which I need a long eye relief for a scope mount I make for those. And by golly, these things hold up hundreds after hundreds of rounds through them. The, the scopes don't blow up. So uh, I'm going to try it on this handgun. This doesn't kick any more than a, than a 7.62 by 5.4. The nice thing is this whole setup here, my thumb, there's no interference. I can safely cock it, shoot it, decock it. I mean, it's, it adds a little bit of weight to the gun, but my gosh, it's not bad. I mean, that's wicked. My plan with this is I want to sight it in and be able to hit some decent groups with a four and a half inch barrel at 50 yards. Because in Iowa, there's a thing called a late muzzle loader season. In late muzzle loader season, you can use muzzle loader, handgun, or bow. So sometimes when I'd go hunting, I'll take the old bow out in the stand with me. And there again, my bow, I can reach out to 50 yards comfortably. But I, I really don't like to take anything more than a 50, more than a 30 yard shot if I don't have to. Uh, the bow I shoot a 50 pound or an 80 pound draw. Uh, it's got a pretty, pretty wicked, I've shot through, straight through both shoulders on a deer before and had the arrow laying on the ground. It has a lot of power. But, depending on where the deer shows up and how, if I can't get the full draw on him without him busting me, this here I can put on him and possibly take down with a magnum load. But you got to have a minimum of a four inch barrel in Iowa to shoot handgun and there's also like the smallest calibers you can use there's 38 on up basically you can't hunt with a nine millimeter it's got to be a 38 357 45 I think you can use 40 I believe uh, don't quote me on it but anyway that's that's a wicked looking rig I, I'm digging on it well it still fit in my case
That's a hard no. So we'll have to get a new case for this guy. But anyway, that's pretty sweet. Let's go ahead and put my ammo back in it because an unloaded gun is of no use to me. There we go. Well, that's pretty cool. Easy, simple, very nice kit from these guys. Even got uh, used solvent to remove oil, peel off backing, and place adhesive coating, coating side to inside of ring on top and bottom half. Huh. So it's a friction material. Well, by golly, I might have to do that. This is going to bite down pretty hard. This aluminum on aluminum housing, it's not going anywhere, in my experience. Anyway, that's it. Well, guys, I hope you guys found this video informative and helpful. We're going to cite this in sometime in the future, and we'll let you know how it goes. This is a good shooting revolver, and uh, I think adding this to it is going to make it more fun. You can reach out there and see them distances better with my old eyes which is harder to do with the iron sight, but now I can get out there and do some cool things. Guys, get out there and have some fun. If it ain't broke, fix it till it is, and I'll see you on the next video.